Hey guys, it's here bringing you another video and a welcome to well, High Rating Spectate. Today we are watching the technical number one Cassante on EU West. I think a lot of us kind of still struggle to see his full strength. So I thought give it a watch. This is in pre-season patch. So obviously all the content you're getting at the moment is still last season stuff because I'm showing you the end of the ranked adventure. Um... But I thought I've got a couple gaps here or there, and in these couple of gaps before you get my live commentaries, which I did actually begin recording today, uh, but you'll be getting that at the start, I believe, of next week, uh, the preseason stuff. Um, I just thought we'd do a challenge spectate here or two. Uh, technically not a challenge spectate. I believe this player at the moment is Diamond 1, but he is officially EU West best Cassante based on win rate, stats, etc. Um, he, as a champion, is gaining... A little bit of win rate so when he first got launched the first day or two he had a whopping about 40 percent win rate he's sitting on about a 46 percent win rate and this is before any big buffs or anything of that have happened so simply by people learning him a bit more his win rate is naturally climbing and if i actually tried to find in detail uh, i've got it somewhere on a tab i've got so many tabs open um let me find this guy's specific profile and then i'll be able to tell you what his win rate is so he has played already a whopping, which is crazy, I guess, um, 80 games of Cassante, which is kind of ridiculous. And I will just say, of me recording this, his rank on EUS actually has gone down. Uh, or, well, I found him about a couple hours ago, and his rank has flopped around a bit. But he's one of the best Cassantes on EUS. Uh, his win rate in 80 games is 71.3% and he's currently in Diamond 1. So that is still pretty damn impressive. Obviously, being pre-season patch, uh, a lot of people, and myself included, have noted how strong tanks are now. The tank items are a little bit nutty, and I will actually just say one of the winners of this patch, I will say, Cassante is against Scion. I actually played a game of Scion earlier today. You'll see that in a few days' uh, time. He's ridiculously strong right now, like insane. And I would actually potentially use the word overpowered. And I, as you all know, do not use that word lightly. Uh, I hate that word because it is used, oh, it's overused. But I'll only use the word if I do truly believe it's nuts. And I do, I would potentially put Scion in the overpowered category. So hopefully he does get nerfs or at least the tank items get nerfed soon. Um, Cause yeah, it, it seems a little bit silly of how much damage can be dealt with how tanky they are, I think around 25 minutes or so in the game as scion i had 5,000 health like that's ridiculous uh but cassante is a champion so obviously his niche is he's a full tank technically but has the skirmisher fighter aspect to him when he ults uh from what most people can see a lot of the time it is actually just worth staying in your ultimate because you're getting the maximum worth of your tank stats and you're still dealing okay damage as a full tank. Uh, much like an Orn or a Scion, they deal a lot of damage as a tank. So does Scion. Uh, sorry, sorry, so, so does Cassante. Now, one thing that you've noticed or hopefully have in the early game, and it's one thing that I think is quite important to Cassante's lane phase, is especially against tanks, and this is where maybe it does differ if you're against something like a Darius or a Camille, you have to, I think, give respect to those type of champions a bit more. But when you're against a tank that in theory does not have the absolute all-in in the early game, you should try to be the aggressor in early lane phase. You're the one that should be pressuring forward. You're the one that should be starting the engages in most of the fights. And you can see already this Cassante is doing that. So that is just the first thing to say. You can see constantly he's looking for the aggro. He's looking for the engage. Holding down his W perfectly to dodge Scion. Can he get the kill? Probably not right now, but probably will bully out a Scion already in lane phase. So overall, really good. Good use of the W. And that is one thing that I will say. I've played Cassante a couple times now since he's been on live. Unfortunately, not had a good enough performance to upload it. But I know in my testing game, a lot of people are like, how's oh, you using the W wrong? And I will admit that I definitely was. The W is a hold ability that you can just hold down the W and you're technically CC immune, as you just saw there when Scion did his big Q. Scion, Cassante didn't get popped up in the air. Look at his movement, by the way, so clean. Uh, and this is what Cassante is. He's a tank with so much mobility of a skirmisher that Scion can't land stuff on him. So this is what we're kind of seeing here. You know, he's just whacking on the Scion when he's even charging Q. So Scion has to end the Q early just in case. So this is what it's all about. Now, I'm not sure if you've had Vision of Graves anytime recently, because I was about to say, 
I would be wondering where the Graves is. And unfortunately for the Cassante, this is going to be a free kill. So a little bit of overstay, a little bit of cockiness from the Cassante. Uh, obviously, as we said, the guy's a Diver 1 player. So maybe why he's not Master or above is maybe he has a bit of weird overstay habits. Um, also, I don't know if anyone just saw there, but semi-trolling, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the Seraphine is top lane. And the Seraphine isn't the support. She is the carry of bot lane. So maybe tilted player maybe troll i don't know um but technically you know it's a diamond one player don't go in 3v1 buddy you've just come back you've just come back to the lane and you're dying instantly so yeah the, maybe this cassante does a bit of weird questionable things but we'll continue watching because obviously there's a reason why i'm watching the game yumi has now given up bot lane and i would say that's okay to do considering the enemy carry has left bot lane not really sure about what the hell the Seraphine is doing. Her name's ELO Hell, but considering her playstyle, she's probably the biggest contributor of people believing in ELO Hell. Uh, because, yeah, that is what I would just call simply trolling, is you're the, the carry. That's the equivalent of an AD carry just giving up bot lane and walking top lane and just staying there at level 4. That's not a thing. So, yeah, very, very weird. Cassante returning to lane obviously has got a Sheen, so, you know, 0-2 admittingly both deaths deaths are on his on his on, on you know on mistakes he's made he's overstayed the first time no vision in top lane and i was even like mentioning where's the graves uh so he, and then he used flash when he didn't he shouldn't have he was dead by that stage and then teleporting back in goes in for a 3v1 so a bit of odd play sneaking in um three people now in bot lane by the way seraphine i don't believe got an assist or anything like that ude does get shut down but they do also kill the fizz and this leaves Cassante a little bit alone in top lane. Sion is on his way back. But Cassante does get one plate, which is always a nice thing. Um, but yeah, a bit of a peculiar game so far. As for uh, runes, by the way, for those that are wondering, Grasp the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Overgrowth, and then going into the Precision Tree, uh, Legend Tenacity, which, yeah, not a bad thing at all. Especially that you're looking to fight constantly as Cassante. Uh, last stand makes sense and the rune stats are attack speed armor and health so there you go um so the scion is likely to go for the item that gives you total health obviously and gives you six percent unit size i also played a cho'gath game earlier as well and was absolutely massive by the by the end of the game so fight actually happening so you can see even though the, the cassante went zero two he's not backing down because the whole point of this champion is to play aggro so he goes for a bit of a weird ultimate, but with the all-in, gets the flip into one more auto, gets the solo kill. So that was very nice. I partially think, and you know, Cassante is still a relatively new champion, and Graves is here again. Um, go back in tank stats, no? Would you not go back in tank stats by now? Mm. I think he should have swapped back to tank, because then at least he might have been able to force tank that by uh, the Graves ult. But it's good he got the solo kill, but again overstay a little bit potentially if he just left straight away he might have been able to get out of there but very clearly this player doesn't ward um so every player makes mistakes every player has weaknesses you know weirdly every some players don't believe they've got any uh, you do every player does um even the best players in the world do and sometimes it's it's weird like I, this Cassante player himself might not realize his very basic mistake of never warding top. So he's such an easy target to gank because he isn't giving himself the very basic information. So it's a bit peculiar, but it is what it is. Um, and that is where, like, some people have said to me, would, you know, do I think coaching in League of Legends is a good thing, paying for a coach? I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think you ever really need to pay for a coach in League, um, if I'm completely honest. I think a lot of it is uh, pointless. But the one thing I will just say is the only thing that I think coaching can give you over um, watching all the free content on YouTube that is basically as good as coaching officially. The one thing it does give you is personal, like someone identifying what your weakness is. But most players, I do believe, could identify their own weakness. If this, because I've got his top lane again, maybe duo is happening here because this is a lot of Graves top lane. Um, but I believe this Cassante player is a Diamond 1 player. If you watched his own replay and you try to get rid of any personal bias and just watch it for what it is, kind of forget that it's you, he, he as a Diamond 1 player would go, God, I never that, that top lane is never warding top. No wonder he's such an easy person to gank. 
and you'd recognize that yourself. And I think most people can do that. As long as you try to get rid of that personal bias of it's you and you just get rid of that mindset, I think most people would kind of eventually go, oh, that's a mistake. Oh, that's a mistake. And that is ultimately what a lot of the time helps you get better is you recognize that he's not going for that cannon over a trade. Not worth it, I would say. But um, I think that's most of the time what coaching gives you. I wouldn't pay hundreds of dollars for it. I think that's a complete scam. But um, obviously some people do. But anyway, uh, trading is actually going quite well. But once again, I would question... Where's the Graves? So he is going to go for it all in. Again, look at the damage. It's actually not too bad. Nearly gets the Scion kill when I actually thought he would no nowhere be near getting that kill. There's the Graves. So Udyr coming around to potentially save the day, uh, giving the vision for the Kazante to see with then the Demolish and the damage form is going to get another Tower Plate there, which is not too bad. Seraphine ending up with another kill. And what the weirdest thing to me is the Seraphine basically trolled it at level four She's returned to bot lane is now is even farm to the Caitlyn. I have no idea how the Caitlyn isn't miles ahead in farm. That is very weird to me. Because that Seraphine with being top lane for a few waves here or there, she at least missed, what, three minion waves? Maybe even more than that? So this Caitlyn should be well over 100 CS, but obviously is struggling. Uh, Fizz, by the way, versus Rise. Rise, you could argue, is potentially in a pretty strong point. Um, Rod of Ages, obviously, which is here, is back in the game, and it's actually fairly weak right now, and it's already going to get a buff. So if Rise as a champion is doing already fairly well with Rod, when it gets a buff, it'll feel even better. He does go down to a gank from Blitzcrank, which, you know, is fine. Iceborne Gauntlet purchase from Cassante, which, by the way, remi uh, is, is not a mythic anymore, just to remind everybody. It got downgraded. And that is what is apparently quite common now for tanks. Even though today I pretty sh I played two tanks, maybe three. I can't remember. I built the new. I, bu I built a mythic every single game first item. But right as I actually said, the intention for a lot of the tanks is you buy either Sunfire or Iceborne first, and then you go for the mythic. Um, so that is actually the intention. But. Um... Oh, wait, no, that is a mythic. Is that still a mythic? Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing things. Sun, Sunfire is not, but Iceborne still is. Okay, my bad. Again, all the changes, it's hard to get used to which is which on day technically two of... Well, technically today was day one for me in preseason because I didn't play any games yesterday. Um, Udyr, by the way, yes, is going demonic first item. Um, the build of demonic and tank is as busted as ever. Riot have done absolutely nothing to try and balance it. Um, and there is already reports of champions like Diana, Master Yi, all the champions that were doing it before. It's there apparently even more obnoxious that yes, they are building full tank and still dealing insane amounts of damage. So that is one thing I will say. We have two roughly months just under um, for Riot to try and get some form of balance in preseason. My faith in the balance team is quite low, uh, unfortunately. Nice tower plate take there. Um... But yeah, my, my faith in the balance team is quite low, but I would hope they get on top of at least that. Uh, lower the, the base. Like, why is, by the way, the, the damage still so high even for tanks? Is because it's the very basic thing of simply base damage in the game is way too high. It's that simple. If you're not building any damage items as a tank, but you're still doing a lot of damage, the only way you're getting that damage is your base damage. So they need to nerf base damage, but it just seems right. It just literally does not want to do that more than anything in life Ooh, so that was actually really nice forcing silent cyanol and right now i will say i'm actually fairly impressed with this cassante damage it's actually not too bad uh it's surprising me how much he's doing i don't think the enemy scion is playing too great obviously scion is pretty basic so you only can play him mainly one way if he overstays here he's dead yeah he's not respecting the cassante at all so he's flashed He's going to try and give himself a bit of time. Tower's dead now, and Sion's the other side. Now, he might get away, because where's how's Cassante going to get to him? But still, like that is domination happening, really, for the Cassante. And just reminding everybody, Graves has been top lane how many times in the early game to try and shut him down? So it does show there is strength here. And ultimately, this is kind of what Cassante is mainly built for, and why he might rise as a more popular champion more because if tank meta comes back, that is what Cassante is good against. He is good against other tanks. Um, so if it does become tank meta, bingo. He will probably become a number one pick. Um, he is a relatively high skill 
champion. That is what a lot of people are saying. If people know Shmion, our top lane Clash player, um, he's been actually playing a lot of Cassante because he's typically a skirmish player like Yone and Camille and stuff like that. So this is the tank for that type of player. He's been playing him and he does say he's strong, but he's hard. And I think that is actually the synopsis that people have to, you know, on the, on the outside, he doesn't look that hard at all. But that's when you're playing bad and you're not doing anything and you're just going to go, oh, he just, he's easy, but he sucks. If you play really well, it's actually quite apparent that he's actually quite good. Um, but it requires quite a lot of knowledge and skill to pull him off. So when I was in the dev meeting with Riot about Cassante, and when the lead dev did say, oh, he is one of League's hardest champions, I actually am starting to believe that now, where I kind of lost that belief uh, after he first came out. I was like, wait, he's easy, but he's just bad. He's quite good. You just need to be on point. If you notice what this Cassante has done, by the way, just to make it very clear, in Trades of Scion, he nearly is perfectly constantly landing combos. He's nearly gotten, you know, near enough 100% uptime of trading against the Scion. He's giving the Scion absolutely no relief in lane phase, while also during those trades, he's farming well, and he's dodging most of Scion's abilities. And if he's not dodging them, he's timing his W well enough to mitigate the damage that would then be coming through. So all of that combined is not easy. That's the whole point. So for a tank, he's actually quite hard because normally tanks are... Tanks are on, you know, when it comes to a champion class, they are in the easier champion class compared to others. Um, but yeah, it, it, if you actually add up everything he's doing, it's it's not that simple. It's not that easy to do everything. And that, that is the point. To make Cassante work, some champions you can do half of what they're supposed to do and you can still make them work relatively well. Some champions you can't. And I think Cassante is one of those that you can't just do half of everything and expect results you need to play well he's basically if you think of what i've always said about ezreal ezreal on average you need to play amazing to be as useful as someone playing average on a typical ad carry because you've got to land every skill shot you've got to have good mobility think of that that that's Cassante. that to be as useful as a scion or an orn or something of that nature you have to play way better than them but if you do play better than them your potential is higher than theirs so that's kind of the mindset that i would start thinking about him he's two levels above the scion he's got so much more farm and scion is obviously as we all know known as one of the farming gods of league of legends this is impressive this is very very impressive and judging by the way just so like people know again as i mentioned he's got 80 games of Cassante with a 71 percent win rate this is so far he's one and three this isn't the best game for this Cassante. But looking at his uh, win rate and, and looking at his games, he has a lot of good games. So uh, he has a lot of games that like he a, a game just an hour ago. I didn't want to show it because it was a 15 minute game. Look at the damage reduction, by the way. He went 703 as Cassante. So he's going to try and get away. Blitzcrank doing a bit of a weird hook. But oh, with the flash, with look at the mobility that a tank, a tank normally does not have this level of abil uh, mobility. Why are you going back in? Just run away. Um, so again, the Graves definitely, definitely seems like he wants to kill this Cassante. And you could have got away. So there is definitely some, like, form of cockiness, I would say, from this guy. Um, several deaths, he definitely could have run away, but chose to go in. A uh, bit Scion-esque, to be honest, because uh, some Scion players do cho choose to die when they don't need to. But the one positive, I will say, of what he's done is he is a massive distraction. So while this is all happening, there's a big fight in mid lane, reminding there was at the time three people on the Cassante, so they are straight in the middle, hopefully taking an, an, an inhibitor. So although it's bad for his personal KD, a lot of the time, you know, tanks don't honestly care that much about KD. It's a nice thing. I wouldn't ever want to like have a really bad KD all the time, but that's worth him having that much of a distraction away from what's actually going on is actually pretty good um i have to remember which game i'm actually watching oh yeah this game so i will say things should spice up quite well for our boy Cassante. so it, things should he i think he must start to group or something but we'll see how it goes sign going in fight actually gonna go on fizz is in the area look at the damage from that rise but Cassante gets the kill looking from the sunfire burn 
Ring of Ring of Rosie happening. Nice cancel there by Cassante. Sion doing a bit of damage. Cassante just does so much damage onto that Fizz. Again, the Fizz is quite far behind. Really bad farm for a Fizz. Is also died nine times. And they are going to make their way into the enemy base, but I don't believe they can finish yet. Judging off the replay file that I can see over to my left. Uh, big ultimate by Seraphine. Engage going to happen. Gets another kill, does the Cassante. Can he get another one? No, he can't. The Rise does. Ace does come through, but there is only one super minion, which is not a lot to try and end a game on. And the enemy team is starting to respawn. There's a new wave coming in, though. They are focusing the tower. Did I watch the wrong replay? What's going on? No. So, yeah, they, they, they're not ending here. The, the enemy team has respawned. They're going to try and make a uh, dash at stopping them. Cassante does go down to the Fizz. Shut down. Enemy team going to end up potentially getting a couple kills. And this obviously is going to stop the game finishing anytime soon. Love that the Fizz is getting absolutely wrecked with that summoner name. And that will be the end of that push for now. Udyr, by the way, simply won't die. Uh, again, that is quite a common thing as well. When a tank is getting ahead... They kind of are staying ahead right now because they are nearly impossible to kill. So this again is going to delay any type of end with Rise going down and then Caitlyn walking into the enemy team by herself. The Caitlyn herself has had quite a bad game. Now two and five and Baron is being pinged. Not sure they can do Baron with Cassante respawning. Udyr is still alive technically. What the enemy team may not know though is he's got no mana or very little mana and he's bot lane. So them going Baron might actually not be the worst call but Udyr should get there. He's very fast, obviously, with his own stance. He has Yumi speeding him up as well. So let's see what they can do. Can they do anything against this Baron? Enemy team is obviously going to be trying to stop the Udyr getting there. And it looks like they've actually just stopped the Baron. Yumi's ulting. Bit of a weird ult. Gets hooked by the Blitzcrank. Goes down, does the Yumi. Udyr's going to go down too. And boom, that is going to be a Baron, potentially. Rise TPing, though. Can we do anything big here? Enemy team triple kill. Cassante, what can you do? As a 1v5 tank does a big knockup into the DPS. One kill. Two kills. Here we go. Into the... Whoa, three kills. Holy moly. Tank, by the way. And going to go for the Scion. Is that a quadra kill? Yes, it is. That was close to a pentakill. So he does have carry potential. That was in my in my head. That never... Wait, is he getting penta? Oh! No, he didn't get the penna. He's so close. So close. But yeah, it just shows that Cassante is a champion that can pop off. And this is, it does kind of go with what a lot that we have said about new champions in League of Legends. It, especially that people are discovering how this champion is working. You can see a guy making it work. Their carry potential is a lot more than old equivalents. So an old tank, which what is Cassante designed as, a tank top laner, has nowhere near the same carry potential as Cassante potentially has. I don't know what the Seraphine is doing. Uh, she does a weird T TP. So that's kind of the point. He's a modern day champion. Never discount a modern day champion. They always have that absolute craziness potential. So he is going to respawn. I presume he's going to teleport onto the Baron. Um, yep, he does a teleport over. So yeah, he's now 765, three full tank items. Um, 70 basically CS ahead of the Scion. Scion's only completed technically one item. So yeah, very good game by him. Played it very well in lane phase. Um, so yeah, absolutely awesome to see. So it does show you, because I, I, I still have people on my stream that believe this champion is absolutely garbage. Does show, hopefully this game shows he's not absolutely garbage. There is stuff he can do. You just need to play it really well. Let's crank hook. So with, I will say, a Yumi, how the hell is this guy going to die? Like, I will just say that right now. Like, I don't even know how he's going to die. So he just, he's tanking three people. Obviously, two of them aren't too strong. Tanks the Scion ultimate. Has the Yumi healing into the W. Three man W. Very nice. And he's just going to walk away to the very next day. Waddle waddle. So yeah, still still surviving. Actually not doing too much, uh, too, too bad damage. Rise double kill. Rise triple kill. Blitzcrank is just looking to see if he can hook. He does get the hook. Rice does a Zonya, and then will likely get himself off the platform. Udid tanks it for him very nicely, and there we go. So that is Cassante. It does show this can work. You just need to play it really well. So that's Cassante in preseason. I am very likely to give him a go myself in the next couple recording sessions. 
Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of him. If you guys enjoyed, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Crawl down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory to live forever. Bring down the dark regime. I know how to unleash eternity.